The next thing that you want to do is change your perspective view and you can go into this drop down menu, set view, and then we want to be using isometrics in this exercise. And again, I've already chosen the northeast perspective to be looking at. And it's important once you open this um, parallel view that you aren't um, kind of pivoting away from it because it will change the angle. So if you do happen to do that, you just have to go back and set it again. So you want to make sure that you're only panning. And again, you can zoom into um, your site. And so now we can see all of these trees are directly facing me as we planned. So the next thing I want to do is get rid of all of this line work and then we are going to export this as a isometric view. So I just got rid of all of the guidelines that we were using to place the trees. I did keep the water's edge line just so that I know um, where that is and the site boundary of course. The last really quick thing I want to show you is it, you might want to include soil profiles in your isometric view. Um, so I'm going to show you kind of a quick way of doing that. If you head into top view, you can grab the surface that your site is sitting on and we're just going to extrude surface. You can decide on the distance. Um, I'm not going to make it too thick. Maybe to there. And so now you see that this topography is kind of sitting on like a soil profile. Um, you can leave it like that or you can actually trim the bottom of this. So you can draw a line across the bottom and then just use the trim command to trim off the excess, delete your line, and then cap that object. And so now if we look at it in perspective view, my um, display is glitching a little bit, but you can see that it's a solid object now. And so now when we go back into this isometric view, we have a little bit of a surface you can talk about soil profiles with. So I thought I'd take a minute to talk about these isometric views in general. Um, these are different from a perspective view. As we know, when we look at something in perspective, there are vanishing points, and so everything that's farther away from you begins to get closer together. In isometric views, that is not the case. Everything that is parallel in real life remains parallel in the drawing, um, and so it does get a little bit wonky, like they tend to look kind of strange, um, just because we aren't used to viewing objects this way but they are useful because they are measured drawings. So just like um, a plan view or a section, everything can be measured in an isometric. It's kind of like taking one section and then another section and putting them together. There are different categories of these drawings. We typically use isometric, which just refers to the angle that something um, is shown at. So this angle here is 30 degrees and the one on the other side is 30 degrees as well. Um, another uh, common one that you might hear is axonometric where these angles are equal to 45 degrees and so actually maybe I'll just show you. It looks kind of something more like more like that. Um, it's kind of more of like a top view um, but the isometric is I think particularly useful in showing the section profiles in addition to part of a plan view. Okay, I'm going to reset my view one more time. And we are going to use the make 2D command. So this allows you to make two-dimensional drawings from any object. 
and you have a, um, a selection here of what view you want to be using. We're on parallel view and this is the view that we want to be exporting. Um, you can use multiple views at the same time. There are these kind of like layouts if you want to um, export maybe like your plan at the same time. Um, but we're just going to stick to the view that we are on. And then there are a bunch of options for what you want to be showing. Um, Hidden lines is maybe the one that you might use in the future, but not for this project. And it just shows dashed lines where anything is hidden behind another thing. Um, it can get really messy if your object is um, any kind of complicated, so I tend not to use it so much. And then we're going to hit OK. Sometimes it takes a few minutes to, um, to generate. Eventually, you will see another layer pop up called Make 2D. And it usually produces close to the origin. And it always produces in top view. So for some reason, the trees didn't, um, didn't work as Make 2D. Um, so you get to see some kind of like real time problem solving. Um, what I just did was I went back and tried make 2D on just one tree, um, and that seemed to work okay. So probably what's happening is my computer is just having a hard time processing it for whatever reason. Um, so now that we have this line work, I'm actually just going to go back and try to make 2D um, only with these trees. So let's see if that works. Okay, and that make 2D works. It did take a while, so I think it's just the complication of the line work. Um, and that one did work, so I think it's just the complication of the, um, the line work was providing some problems. And you can see still, like, they're, for some reason, see-through. Um, they're valid surfaces, so they shouldn't be. Uh, you know, again, sometimes Rhino's glitchy. Fortunately, there are usually workarounds. The next step is to do a little bit of cleanup work. Your, um, your 2D drawing might be a little bit more messy than mine is, even though I do have a substantial amount of work to do here. So you're just going to go through and delete any of the lines that you don't want to be there. Um, for me, it'll be a lot of these trees being see-through and grouping line work that you want um, to stay together. So again, I had a problem with these trees um, being all different kind of pieces. Um, there's only a couple pieces per tree, so it shouldn't be a, too big of a deal to um, be selecting these and just grouping them. Um, so you're gonna spend a little bit of time, and trust me, like cleaning up this line work is much, much easier in Rhino than it is in Illustrator. So take your time, clean it up, and then when you are all done, just do exactly um, how you've been exporting line work before, where you just go um, select whatever you would like to export, and then export selected as um, an Illustrator file. You can go in and tweak colors, line weights, and anything else.